Each of the trials, I think, gave us a little bit of extra evidence. Should we be using it in our tiny premies? What about our term infants? Should we be using it as a primary mode? What about a secondary mode as post-extubation support? Since we introduced nasal high flow, we've seen a difference in the proportion of babies on the different forms of non-invasive respiratory support. In the first six months, we had 97 babies on it. And then this literally doubled in the next six month period. So I think what we found is that people have very readily accepted it, that it's become very commonplace in its usage. We didn't want to introduce it really until we had a much firmer evidence base to support it. There were compelling research trials that were carried out and were published in 2012 and 13. The first one was Claire Collins et al, where they looked at successful extubation essentially. They either extubated to CPAP or to high flow and, and what they found was that the therapies were roughly equivalent but even more importantly they found that the nasal trauma rates were significantly lower within the high flow group. And then this was borne out again in Manley et al's study which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Bradley Yoder's trial is the largest trial to date and his was interesting because they also used it as a primary mode of support not just a post-extubation support. Each of the trials I think gave us a little bit of extra evidence. Should we be using it in our tiny premies? What about our term infants? Should we be using it as a primary mode? What about a secondary mode as post-extubation support? So we did a, a survey of all neonatal intensive care units in the UK to see what they were doing. What number of litres flow were they starting on? How frequently were they weaning it? There is always a concern that essentially the pharyngeal pressure um, might be higher, particularly in the smaller babies. And I think that there had been several studies done around that area and they'd found that the pharyngeal pressure was correlated essentially with the number of litres flow and also inversely correlated with the infant size. So for us, we only used flow rates that had already been um, documented as used in research studies with no adverse effects. So that was important for us to do. The cost of the high flow circuit was marginally cheaper than the bubble CPAP circuit. We have to sort of offset that with um, the knowledge that babies on high flow look so comfortable that nurses tend to leave the babies on for longer. So probably overall I suspect the costs are roughly the same. We thought that there would be more challenges facing us actually than there were. The research came out at just the right time for us to draft our protocol. We had the survey results, we had a really important practice development team within the trust, you know, who could actually roll out this educational program. And then we had the support of the company. In the next few years, I look forward to getting more evidence around how to wean and perhaps even some better understanding of the mechanism of action which can then help me clinically. It's really important to keep up with everything that there is about the therapy so that you can always stay current.